and let them have dominion. The kingdom of God is within people. It's the advancement of the people that is advancing. Because of the faith must be backed by the assignment of this ministry is found from that verse. You're onto a word encounter as Pastor David Ogweli ministers God's word to you with simplicity and power. God bless you. He created them to control the earth, to control the circumstances on earth, just like God controls the heavenlies. Uh, there are seven tools I use to study the prophetic. If you watch me, you see I don't talk anyhow, but when I stand on something, it happens. One of them is the sign of Israel. Everybody should know that if you are studying the end time, Israel is God's time clock. Am I correct? Now, for example, I predicted the arrival of Obama and uh, somebody asked me, apart from the fact that uh, God gave me the revelation and the understanding, but there was something he told me to watch out for. The moment I saw it, I knew that there was no going back. I got bored. That's why I stood in the U.S. He has not even won the, the primaries and I stood there and declared that he's going to be the president. And uh, people asked me, are you more prophetic than John Hagee? Especially when I preach in a white church and uh, Rob Parsley. I said, <laughs> let me tell you what happened that period. There was a sign. This is the second tool you need to take note of in studying this end time and all that. God told us that there will be signs in the sun and in the moon. Luke chapter 21 verse 25. These ordinances you see in the heavens were created as God's method of communication. The heavens declare the glory of God and the farmer may show his praise. The issue whether you know how to get the language. For example, how did the wise men know that the Messiah was born? What told them? Was it CNN? What where did God put the adverts? Now, before human beings started making satellites that we put on it, you know how we get CNN here? It's a star, man-made star. Some nights you see some of those satellites shining or you think it's a real star made by God. Eh? Because they are closer to the Earth orbit. You know, we were in the uh, John F. Kennedy uh, Space Center and shot us. When this thing started taking off, I said, oh my God, is this my last day on? What have I gotten myself into? Why did I agree to enter this thing? Because until it crosses the gravitational force, if you see what astronauts go through when this thing is going off, then finally when it crosses gravity, you relax. And then we were floating around the earth. Now, but anyway, that apart... Now, there are a lot of things down. There are satellites now because each time they want to shut up, it's these things that take it off and then hang it. That's giving us all the communication, all this, your mobile phone, everything we're doing on earth. But it's man-made. And these things watch the whole world. Every 45 minutes, it goes from day to night. That's the speed you are traveling. Every 90 minutes, it completes one full cycle on the earth. You know why you are here? You are in the night now. Some people are in the day. Are you aware? Every 45 minutes, you meet those people in the day, like Canada. Another 45 minutes, you are back in, in the night. So in these 24 hours, it takes us to go round. This satellite has gone round the earth more than 24 times. Close to 30 times. I, I, I learned now that uh, our election institution, what is it called again? INEC is trying to use this to actually number Nigeria to kind of get a count. Because if everybody comes out, it can count everybody. From space, it sees even a dot on the floor. That's what they used to capture Bin Laden. When the father found that compound where he was, satellite was monitoring him 24-7. Every time he sent somebody out, they were monitoring them. They were going until they made one, that one foolish phone call. And that was... Now, that's human beings. Then think about God. Now, so God doesn't advertise on CNN. doesn't advertise on your NTA and others. He has his own satellite broadcasting station. 
is the moon, the sun, and the what? The stars. He created this communication equipment long before now. So, watch Luke chapter 21 verse 25. There shall be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. And upon the earth, distress of nations. Part of the signs of the coming of Christ, perplexity, the sea, and the waves. Stop playing with those things you see. They are not what people are calling. They are not coincidences. All this, your hurricane and all that. But I'm talking about the heavenly signs. So the day Jesus was crucified, did you notice what happened? What happened? What are the signs that happened? There was total eclipse of the sun. You think it's coincident? No. Now, here is the warning. The Jewish feast is the third tool I use to, to know direction because there are seven of those feasts. Jesus could not have died in September. He had to die during what? Passover. He had to die during what? The Passion Week, if we really want to get it right. You know, I think that's where the Gregorian calendar to a level in locating Easter came close. Because sometimes the Jews are ending the Passion Week we are starting. Sometimes as we are ending they are starting. So they came close. At least we, we get the feeling that Easter and Passover are around. But you can see where they put the New Year, January. It's three months after the real. The Catholic Church did a lot of funny stuff. Because God is not following that calendar. He's following the calendar that is marked by the sun and the moon. I, I'm sure you know this. Je Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. Let me say this first. Genesis 1 14. Wh what he gave us to mark time. God said, let there be light in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And let, there, let them be for what? Signs. So if Jesus wants to come, God is going to put up a sign. He's going to do an advert on this. Let them be for seasons. There are five purposes for creating the sun. Giving light is just one. They have other four functions. One of them is signs. They let it be for seasons. They are the ones that decide winter, autumn, and all these four seasons of the year. And then for days and for years. Okay, so you see, this is the calendar God is using, you know, not your whatever. Okay, verse 15. Let them be for lights. That's one of their functions in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Then verse 16. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night, and he made the stars also. Okay. Going back to the coming of Jesus, I want you to understand when they, because some of these languages, Shemitah, Shemitah means the year of release. There is is Sabbath of weeks, seven days Sabbath. Another seven day Sabbath, which is how God is operating. Very important. Then you have Sabbath of years. Every six years, seventh year is the Shemitah year, just the year of release, a Sabbath year. The Jews will let the, the land rest that year. And there are writings on that. Now, the Bible is a combination of the Old Testament and the New. Don't tear God's Bible apart. You will be one person with one eye. There's something that is happening in this, uh, you know, completion of the age. God is gradually bringing back the Jews into the equation. Because the Bible was written in Jewish language. The Old Testament in Hebrew, the New in Greek, but it came from the Jews. The revelation of God came from the Jews. Today. And some of these symbols, we are interpreting them with our Gentile mindset. And so some of the revelations are hidden. Hey, 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 Romans chapter 11 verse 15. Let me show you something fast. Hey, find me in the verse. So we don't read too much. Partial blindness is falling to, on Israel till the fullness of the Gentiles be. Find me the verse, please, 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 please. It's there, it's there. Find which verse. Look at, look at it. Romans 11 verse what? Blindness in part is falling upon, type it in. Uh -huh. 
I will not have you brethren ignorant of this mystery. Okay, so Paul was writing to the Gentile nations starting with Rome that we should be careful about this. He doesn't want us to be ignorant of this. That blindness in part. Everyone said that. The Jews are looking with one eye. He didn't say with total blindness. What did they understand? Old. What do you understand? New. Now God is bringing the two back. You two have been looking with one eye. Let me tell you what it is. God hid the redemptive plan from them. But they understood the old covenant. What did they, did, did they miss? The cross. The preaching of the cross is foolishness. To them that perish. So to the Jew is a stumbling block. To the Greek is foolishness. That's where their problem was. In their plan, in their understanding, the Messiah was not supposed to die. The Messiah has two assignments and two comings. I want you to get this clear. The Messiah has two comings. Two times he was going to come. And he has two pictures in prophecy. The first, they call it Messiah ben Joseph. The other is Messiah ben David. That they understand clearly Messiah ben David. The one that is coming as a king. And they have clear understanding of the timings given when he will be here. Their problem is the Messiah being Joseph. The one that will be sold for 30 pieces by his brothers. You remember how they sold it? The one that will be suffer. The one that will end up accepted by the Gentiles. And become a prince among Egyptians. But later in the last days will be reconciled to his brothers that sold him. That is the one where they stumbled. That's where the blindness came from. He came to them, his own people. His own people rejected him. And they were the one that sold him to the Romans. And washed off their hands. And Jews don't do that. They don't betray their brother to the Romans. But they did it. Allow the Gentiles to now crucify him and do all of that. But now he is the one that has now been made king of kings and lord of lords. He is the most popular Jewish man now. The whole world is now creating calendar revolving around him. Everything in civilization is now revolving around him. He's troubling the Jews. Even all these are pilgrimage to Israel. Without the Christian nation, the Jewish nation will have been destroyed. We have been their state. He's troubling them. What is this Jew that we thought? It's crazy. And we killed him. Because we thought his teachings were against Moses. That is now the one that the whole world is turning to. Now, he will be unveiled to them. But that is at his second coming. Because when he comes the second time, he rides on a white horse down. They will accept him. They know the prophecies about his second coming. And they believe in it. They know even where his feet will step on. Prophets told them everything. There is nothing missing. They know the timing too. That's why God messed up one or two things in the calendar. So that nobody can be able to tell exact. Maybe I should also give you this warning. Remember that all the predictive prophets that have seen the future and its authentic are Jews. Whether it is Daniel or all the ones you read in the Bible. Or John the beloved in the New Testament. Or even Nostradamus that is a French physicist. He's a Jew. It is their mandate, their calling. So what is happening to Christian leaders is that everybody is turning their eye on Israel. And you will be foolish not to. Because what is happening is that at the end of the age, the Bible said the blindness will start lifting. As the fullness of the Gentiles is coming. God has given us church age for 2,000 years now. Now they are beginning to wake up. They are coming into the faith. It has not come fully. Look at the, the greatest rabbi that died last year. Is, is this what he's here? Is this here now? Is this here? That man that lived over, 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 well close to 100 years, 100 and something years. Now, they have taught them Judah, followed them, and he wrote a secret and hid it. And he told them they should not open it. He knew it would cause controversy. 
that the day he died, after they buried him, they can open it. And when they opened it this year, he wrote there that the Messiah they've been waiting for is Jesus Christ. It started a revival in Israel. A lot of, if you see the amount of Jews that are turning into Messianic Jews now. Because once the light starts coming up over them, then it's time it starts going down again. Can't you see what's happening to America, the Christian nation, the European nation? Thank God for Africa now. There's still light here. Thank God for Asia, where the thing is coming up. And then thank God for you know, whatever. But can't you see that the so-called Christian nations are in darkness now? The light is now returning to... Did you see even the Middle East, where Apostle Paul and Co. reached first, the Islam took over? Six million Muslims, seven million Muslims are coming to Christ every year. Majority is Jesus appearing to them. He shows them his hands. I mean, sir. Even blindness of Muslims are lifting gradually. Now, let me now show you a secret. This is one of my secrets. Because I know how God speaks, and I know his tools of communication, I have, I, I've, I've learned this long ago. You know, so I watched. An eclipse began from Southern America. Just before that American election. It began from Latin America, crossed the Caribbean, crossed this Atlantic, entered Africa, through around Togo, entered Nigeria, moved all the way to northern Nigeria, traveled all the way down to Libya, and reversed the route of slave trade. The same route. Do you know where they dumped our slaves, the Caribbeans, and down to certain part of U.S., down to... Or, you know, you go to Brazil, there is Olokundel. There is Yoruba-speaking Brazilians. I don't mean Yoruba people that travel recently now. These gods, the different festivals you have here, they have them there. You go to Haiti. There is this voodoo that are worshipping in, in Togo here. In, in, in whatever. Their own is even what? They are preserving it even better than the people at the homeland. Some Caribbeans, you go there. They said some of the st most stubborn whatever they faced during the slave trade. I was in Maryland, governor, the uh, governor's office in Maryland. They hosted us for a three-day stop. And they brought books written by some slaves. And they brought one. He's an Igbo man. Have you heard about Equano, for example? Eh? Now, a broad book by that one. They brought another book. And then they traced. They said the most stubborn slaves that gave them headache. This man was telling us. Because as we are introduced, he said, you are, you know, you introduce yourself. You say, you are Igbo or Yoruba. Or, I say, Igbo. This governor of a state in the U.S. He knows us. Then he said, listen, this is one of the states that took slaves, even fought during, you know, you know the war, the American Civil War, was partly over this slave issue. He said, the most stubborn slaves, I think Miles Muro is an Igbo man, because he mentioned that particular country, Carib uh, Bahamas, where that gave them headache. You know what he said? Some of them, even after bringing them to the Americas, dropped them there, they will refuse. One time a group of them got that, rushed down the cliff, jumped into the sea, drowned. And it was then the white man started studying and they observed. Of course, they said the British have done their own study. When they colonized Nigeria, the people that gave them headache. <laughs> have you heard of a, a bar riot, women riot? In... When they decided to bring tax, the people that will refuse... They will mobilize them. Have, have, have you heard about Ebubedike and all this Okonkwo kind of? That was why the carry power with Zeke and all this were negotiating the and gave to the North and gave them back in. And during the war, the Biafran war, they supplied them weapons. Part of the divide we have in the nation was introduced by the British. So they showed, I have finally bought a copy of those books and I read. This guy traced how he was kidnapped from his village in the east. How all the journey down to Calabar port, all the whatever down to 
But he finally bought his freedom. Worked hard enough and bought his freedom. Ended up marrying a white. Went to school. And became one of the voices that fought for emancipation of the slaves and the ending of slavery. So I now went to the, the history of slave trade and calculated that how long the Jews stayed was 400 years. Because 400 years, God breaks that cycle. And I went. It was the year that made it the 400 year. I knew without fail that there is no power that can keep that the black, the era of the black, the third son of Ham has started. And that 19, uh, whatever, Obama in March, I, I declare with boldness from now, 2000 and the next 100 years, the time of the black race. Obama was just used as a sign. He heard what I said again. I was in the U.S. I declared he was going to win the second election. Not because he's good, not because he's born again, but because we're dealing with a people group. Any black man now that has anything to offer to his world that does not do it this time, it will be over. Soon now. Because after Africa, the baton is returning to the Jews. And it's over. The revival that is coming now is going to be coming from Africa. And it's this country God is depending on. But the revival is not for Nigerians. It's for the whole continent of Africa. And it's for the whole world. It's like when the Protestant Reformation came, it wasn't for the British, it was for the whole world. When the Pentecostal revival came for the US, it wasn't for the American, it was for the whole world. It's the only Americans that speak in tongues now. Eh? Have you been affected by what God gave them to give to the world? Now the time for Nigeria has come. Now, they are looking at next year and they are thinking it is Jesus' return. It is the emergence of that outburst from heaven. But let me show you what, it, what, what, what is going on. Now, let me show you. Joy chapter 2, verse 30. Now, I want to show you this because you need to start taking notes. Anytime eclipse occur again, whether of the moon and the sun, check, and it falls into the Jewish calendar. Take note of it. Now, like something I'm going to explain to you. Like they are showing the ones falling into Passover. The eclipse that lines with Passover will not make any difference anymore. The ones that will have made a difference made a difference when the lamb was slain. Is somebody getting the lesson? Like the one that happened the day he was uh, The earthquake that occurred the day he rose from the dead. The earthquake that occurred that day he gave up the ghost. The moment he gave up the ghost, the earth reacted. It was not whatever. Somebody that knew how to do this calculation could have predicted that that was going to happen. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Now, but, Passover is no more the issue until the day we're going to sit with Jesus and take that communion again in the new kingdom. What is the issue now? Is the Feast of Trumpet, the Feast of Tabernacles, these ones that are dealing with his second coming. Ben Judah, Ben, ben uh, uh, Messiah, Ben Joseph is not the issue. We will keep preaching it because that's where salvation comes from. But what the whole world is waiting for now is Messiah Ben David, the ruling king. The king of kings that is returning. He's not coming back to die again. He's not coming back to suffer again. He's not coming back to be thrown into a pit or his garment to be torn anymore or for them to cast garment. He's coming to rule this earth for a thousand years. So your eye need to be on September, October. On the wherever the Jews are announcing that their new year, you should be out conversing with that calendar. Just like God announced his first coming with the moon, the sun, and the star, and zeroed in on one star and put all the advert there. And to everybody, it's just another solar event. To people who have understand it, they knew what has happened. His second coming will be greatly announced. Look at it. I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. That's in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. If you start from verse 28. But part of what he said he would do is why this revival is going on. He will get to this point. I will show wonders in heaven and in the earth. Blood 
and fire and pillars of smoke. Verse 31. The sun shall be turned into what? That's what they are calling solar eclipse. And the moon shall be turned into what? Before what? The great and the terrible day of the Lord come. Which one is it? First coming, second coming? Second coming because he's talking about the last. Okay, let me show it to you in the New Testament. Maybe it will, it will make sense. Let's hear from Jesus himself. Matthew 24, 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. This is called the signs of the Son of Man. Everyone say it. The sun will be darkened. There will be a cleanse of the sun and the moon shall not give her light. There will be a cleanse of the moon and then the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Verse 30. Then shall appear what? The sign of the Son of Man in the heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power. And what? And what will be the next thing? Read that. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from where? The four corners of the earth. From one end of heaven to the other. You must not be found missing that day. Amen. I have seven tools. They don't fail. They are biblical tools. It's like when you put this your uh, microscope in your eyes. You see what other eyes don't see. Bacteria. When you put stethoscope in your eyes, you start seeing stars clear that are not visible to the naked eye. When you put those tools in your eyes, you see prophetic signals clear. Zechariah 14. I'm just the one that is teasing you because you don't need more scriptures. I've given you enough. But Zechariah 14. I just want to read about the coming of Jesus. Look at some of the things that will happen there. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. Thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of the Israel. Or is, that's one of the signs. If you see Israel invaded in these last days, pack your bag. Because after they return back to the promise, like the, the end of the end time began. Next, you see them. That's what the woman left, read for us about Jacob's trouble. Men will be fit. Men will be like they are in labor. They are going to go through that. Seven years of tribulation. Anyway, we are supposed to have gone before that. But you know there is argument whether the church should go before or whether the church will be here when it starts and we go in the middle. Whichever one it happens, the only thing I want to be ready. There is war coming in the middle of Israel. It's fast approaching. Verse 2. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. The city shall be taken. That means the Jews will go through houses rifled, women ravished, a lot of women raped. Half of the city shall go into captivity. That's why the Arab world is working to get this nuclear weapon. The residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. That means everybody will not be killed. But half of them. Verse 3. You now see why it's called Jacob's trouble. Everyone say Jacob's trouble. Then shall the Lord. Everyone say then. then. Why is it that Jesus will not step down? He waits until they have got almost halfway. They think they will not destroy Jerusalem. Then. If you want to study timing when Jesus is going to step down on eastern sky, riding on a white horse, Revelation told you he's coming for the battle of Armageddon. 
which is the only one the Jehovah Witness get right. Every other thing nonsense. <laughs> then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations. And you know, Zechariah even gave us a list of some of the countries that we're fighting here. Arab nations led by Russia. Libya will be in it. I think about two African nations were named by name in prophecy. And if you check now, they are top enemies of Israel. And everything going on in that middle is Russia takes side with them. Whether it's Syria or Iran or anywhere. They're actually the ones supplying them the weapons because they don't manufacture nothing. Then the Lord shall go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Verse. So these are Jesus being Joseph, Messiah, love, died, lamb. The one that is coming is a warrior. He's going to kill. He's going to massacre people. Get the two sides of God. God is a balance between love and justice. He is love, but he's also a consuming what? Okay. Because Jesus cannot be different. He's the image of the Father that he is. He's the express image of God the Father. He's like his Father. Okay. His feet shall stand where? In that day upon Mount what? So the same mountain he has ascended from in the same place he's going to land. Which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the mist. It will cleave into two. Thereof towards the east and towards the west. And there shall be a very great valley. Half of the mountain shall be removed towards the north. Half of it towards... Landscape will be rearranged. Just that a one person landed. One person's feet stepped on the earth. If you see the kind of earthquake that woke up. The one that occurred when he rose... When he died, he said, a major earthquake shattered rocks. When he rose, it was a great earthquake. When he comes, it is going to be the most terrible time. Science. Science. Do you know how to read prophetic signs? Verse 5. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountain, for the valley of the mountain shall reach unto Azar, yea. You shall flee like as you fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah. Because there is one king of Judah and the Lord my God. Everyone said the Lord my God shall come. He's talking about Jesus' return. And the Lord my God shall come. And what? All the saints with him. That means we must have gone in the rapture. But some other people are arguing that it's the departed saints. And then those of us that are alive and remain to that day will be caught up to join them in the air. Whether it means that the rapture has occurred and all of us are coming with him because he said all the saints. Or whether it means that the departed ones are going to be coming with him and then the rest of our alive and remain to that day will be caught up to meet all of them in the air and then we're going to join one mighty army. Because that's the argument that is in the body now. The rapture will have occurred before this final stuff. And I'm working with that. But if we get there, it hasn't occurred. And we stay here, the war breaks out in the Middle East. Whichever one, we just continue. I'm in the lost camp. I'm in the army. I don't have any problem. Can I hear you say amen? (laughs) Then verse, verse 6. It shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear. It's talking about eclipse now. The sign of the Son of Man. The light shall not be clear, nor dark. But it shall be one day we shall be known to the Lord, which is what Jesus was saying. You can't predict to that point of that day. But we should know the time and the season. Okay, it shall be one day we shall be known to the Lord, not day, not night. It shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. And go, one more verse. And it shall be that in that day that 
living waters. I was shown this in a vision. And I was in Europe when rapture occurred. Sometimes it's still, anytime I'm in Europe, I remember it in my mind. All my hair stands up. I'm careful what I'm doing. Because I don't know whether it's going to happen exactly as he showed me. I was in Europe when the rapture occurred. And I was in the streets of London going, you know, to shop. I just finished preaching and doing some meetings. And I was going to shop. Wide in the street, all of a the sudden, this sign started in the air. And people, there was confusion. People were running helter skelter. Like you heard, the kings of the nation will mourn. People, as they see the one, they rejected the returning. And all kinds of things were going on. And I was in the street looking up. I recognized what was going on. And then all of a sudden, he descended through that dark, whatever, eclipse, with a bright light that was stronger than the, I don't know how to explain the, the light, the glory that came with him and the angelic backing and the forces that were riding on horses with him. Once the light hit me on the ground, I took off. And I noticed people from everywhere were rising, transfigured in white. <laughs> Anytime I'm traveling to the West, US, you can, I always, I'm always... Because in this period, I travel during this critical period. After a while, I even adjusted my trips. So I said, why shouldn't I be in Africa? On pilgrimage in Israel. Or in a pastor's retreat. That's why we put retreat for you this September ending October. It was carefully done. It was carefully done. Something came up and interfered with it. National, you national. The CEC held series of meetings. After each year, they would say, say this, we can do you summit another time. This is the time. But we put it because of Nigeria's independence. Because Nigeria's birth fell around the critical times. Yes, yes. This nation has a destiny with God. Yes, it's true. And then, I noticed something. I was allowed to observe a few things. Because this is one of the You have heard me talk about it before. I talked about it the very year. I noticed that after the whole places were cleared, and then we settled down, we returned to the earth. I noticed what was going on in Jerusalem. I actually told myself, that should not be your first time of being in this city. This, these are places. Pilgrimage is important. At least once in a lifetime. Visit the Holy Land. It will help with that your Bible you've been carrying. All the nations of the earth, apart from the war, and because what ended the war was not shooting weapon or anything. It was the light of his glory that massacred all those armies. Anyway, there were a lot of things that happened, several months of burying dead people. But government, the new government settled down. I noticed that people now make Jerusalem the center of pilgrimage on earth. You see this thing, this, this period of the year, September, all this pilgrimage to Jerusalem, it became a global phenomenon. And they captured all those surrounding lands and all those whatever. If you see the millions of people that come every year, because the king they are talking about is now present on earth, and he is there for 1,000 years. But of course, before he, after that, he settles down to government, you know what is going to happen now. They have to start deciding who will run the different nations. Who will run states, who will run countries, who will run continents. And everything is based on your works. Not on your faith or talk. Not on confession. Keep checking the scripture. He will reward every man according to his work. The work is not work you do then. It's work we are doing now. It's what we're doing now. How many nations did you take? How many souls did you win? 
How many people did you disciple? Were you victorious in the battles of life? Because all the reward will go to overcomers. All. Not a single reward is coming to somebody defeated. To him that overcometh, I will give to sit with me on my throne, just like I overcame and sat with my father. To him that overcometh, I will give access to enter in, into that city. To him that overcometh, to him that overcometh. Jesus talking to the church directly through Apostle John. That's why I level. That's why I don't care what he, is the personal cause. And that's what I'm going to do. And that's what I'm going to give my life for. That's what I will die doing. And that's what I look forward to as my blessed hope and my reward. Somebody say, tell me thank you. Good. You don't. It doesn't mean anything. I'm not working for you. You buy me a car, thank you, I appreciate it. You don't, it doesn't mean anything to me. To our base, to our bound, both of them are alike to me. It's time for missions. I say it's time for missions. Africa's time has come. I say it's time for missions. Now, people who are wise like wise virgin, are keeping their eye. With everything they are doing, they are keeping one eye, knowing that they are coming. Some are even expecting that it might come 2014, 2015. And the next sabbatical year will be seven years after that. People are keeping their eye on the watch. And some people are living as if nothing is happening. What if I'm wrong and he actually returns? Now, this year's Passover celebration has just passed. That means we just escaped another year. I mean, I'm talking about uh, Feast of Trumpets and Tabernacles. It has just passed. We have just escaped another year. But it is when those signs, those heavenly signs, collaborate with the Jewish feast. And there will be, there will be four times it will happen next year. Uh, two times next year, two times in 2014. Of course, four times next year, four times in 2015. Four times next year. Oh, since 2,000 years Jesus died, it has only happened seven times. The one, you know, Passover and his resurrection. And then six other times in 2,000 years. But in one year, it's going to happen four times. Let me, let me show you the dates. Right, right. So. April 15, 2014. We are going to have an eclipse of the moon. And it's during Passover. It doesn't have to mean anything to you. It means a lot to me. I know the language God speaks. April 29, 2014, there will be a eclipse of the sun. Two of those major signs are going to happen in this April. But I told you that Passover is not the issue now. Because this is a Passover period. Passover is not the issue. The sign of Passover has been fulfilled when he came first and died. So we're not waiting for another sacrificial lamb to die. What we're waiting for is the sign of his coming. Okay? So let's look at the, the tabernacles. October 8, 2014, you're going to have another eclipse of the moon. Two from the moon, two from the sun. October 23, 2014, you're going to have an eclipse of the sun. And this is the time of the Feast of Tabernacles. There is something that is going to happen from the heavens next year. The information I have from the Holy Ghost is that a new force, a new outpouring is arriving from the heavens, on the earth. A new move of God is beginning on the earth. And 
that is going to, and it's a global mission movement. But it's going to combine all the major move of God, all the characteristics in it. Okay, look at 2015. April 4th, 2015. Passover time again. There will be another eclipse of the moon. How is this possible? How can you spread seven in 2,000 years and now you are throwing almost four plus four, eight in just within... If you know, if you study, if you know how it takes before this thing ever happens, if you know how long, now watch, oh, and this is doing Passover. The same year, 2015, on March 20, that's 15 days earlier, you're going to have eclipse of the sun. So the sun shows, the moon follows. Now, the same year again, this year now is in reverse. The sun is coming first. 2015. 2014, the moon is coming first. The same 2015, we go towards the critical period, which is the Feast of Tabernacles and all of that. It is September 28, 2015, there will be eclipse of the moon. And 15 days earlier, that one, September 13th, there will be eclipse of the sun. There will be signs in the moon and in the sun. Stars. And upon earth, distress of nation. Now, you can see the guy that was able, Dr. Brin was a Jewish rabbi that was able to predict. They predicted the starting of the Iraqi war. They predicted all these major things that are going on. And they get it to the core. Because I told you, the Jews did not have total blindness. They only had what? Partial blindness. One eye was open, but the Messiah, the work of the cross was hidden from them. The reason is that they were the only thing in the olive tree. God needed to keep them so that we can come in. Did somebody hear what I just said? That the moment Christ finished dying, rose from the dead, Pentecost was poured, a few years after he destroyed the temple. God permitted the Roman Empire to destroy the temple. And now, <laughs> in these ending days, they are going to rebuild it. Many people believe it will be rebuilt before Jesus comes. But even if he is not, it is one of the first things. Because God told David that his seed will build him a house. The house he built is the church, actually. But, there will be a physical temple, according to the scripture. So he will do again a symbol of what Solomon did. Because he's the real seed that will do it. If you go there now, there's a black rock sitting on top of the place the temple should be. So you know what is going to cause war. There were some people who were worried that Jesus was going to come in 1998 around this period because there were some things that were going on, crazy things that were going on that year. And some Jewish zealots went underground because they are turning us down to that point to come and blow up that, that whatever. The whole Islamic world will have descended on Israel. But of course, finally, Israeli government dictated it on time and whatever. But even it caused some small riot, but they were able to quench the stuff. Because there are a few crazy guys out there who want to fulfill end time prophecy by themselves. <laughs> and God doesn't need your help. But He said you should be alert. Amen. One of these days, I think it's December now, prophetic conference, I will show you all the seven tools. But remember the time clock. T, t, t. You, you have clock on the wall. Buy one. A new one is Jews. Israel. T, 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 t. It's ticking. While you're sleeping and waking up. Blindness in part is on Israel. The blindness is lifting now. It's lifting. Because the time of the Gentiles is coming to a close. 
Africa's era is what is ending the season of the Gentiles. God has used the three sons of Noah. He is dealing with the last now. He has used the Shemitic people. When the church started for almost 300 years, all the preachers were Jews and people from the Arab world. These, these Arab people you see were the ones preaching to us. Most of those bishops you were hearing in every church fathers. From Antioch, from, it's all Turkey, all these people that are now bowing their heads to Allah. After the Shemites, the team moved to the Japhetic people, what is called the Caucasians. He moved to Europe, starting from Greece to Rome, down to Britain, down to. They have held the thing. Then he shifted to U.S. Even in U.S., it was still the Caucasians. Now he's shifting to Africa, he's shifting to Asia. And then he's going to shift back to the Jews. Do we have 2,000 years to do our own job? If you are sensible and you are seeing what is going on. I don't even know. If we have up to 7 years. I don't know if we have up to 14. Anything can happen. Anything can happen now. Let me warn us. With the signs Jesus is giving from the heavens, he's showing that his coming is now, now. I know that the language of the spirit and earth is not exactly the same. One second in heaven, my end of meaning seven days here. But, you cannot but be ready. You cannot play with your life in this season. You cannot be slothful in kingdom business. If there is anything you want, I was talking with Reverend Oliver we in a mission. I said, anything anybody wants to do for God this next seven years, let's do it now. Because the years that are following, there will be great persecution on the earth. You see this liberty we have now? Move around, preach. It's not going to be forever. Some of you that are in US, Europe now, preaching, running churches, if you see what is coming for those, those of you guys, if you see what is coming, this is your time now. Do what you want to do for God. Collect all your crown now. Days are coming now. You invite me, I will come. I'll tell you, I'm in a mission in Rwanda, in Rwanda and all this place. I'm telling you. If you see what is coming for... But first, there is going to be a global move of God. But when I read the prophets, they said it's going to be a quick work. But it will sweep millions of people into the kingdom. But it's going to be a quick work. It will be cut short in righteousness. And God is raising people everywhere for it. Be in the army. Don't just be a church person. Don't just be a pastor whose eye is centered on congregation and the four walls of the church. Wake up from sleep. Let's pray for a few minutes before I, I hand this mic over to my brother. We'll still be able to do a few things this night. Before. Yes, yes, just for, for a few minutes. And maybe for any reason, you have not given your life to Christ. Somebody say, how can you make such altar calling where there are pastors? There are pastors that are not born again and are pastoring in these last days. If for any reason, you are not God's child. Repent of your sin and ask Jesus to come into your heart. Then if for any reason you are not living for him, you are a backsliding preacher, you are swimming in sin, repent of it. You are living in rebellion or living in, in iniquity, repent of it. Ask Christ to remove a garment that is defied by the flesh and clothe you with a garment of righteousness. Ask him to cleanse you with his blood. Ask him to make you fit for his service in these last days. If you have for any reason, you know there is a call of God on your life, but you have not yielded to it till this moment. Like Jonah, you have been running after business, running after career. Correct your ways now. Repent of it. Ask the Lord to forgive you and tell him to help you that you don't have time anymore. 
because you're wasted here, then you have to maximize and make maximum use of the time that is left. If for any reason God made himself known to you, you don't have any tangible thing to show if you stand before Christ. Repent now. Repent now. Ask him, tell him that you are sorry to help. And then ask him for help. To double your effort in soul winning, in church planting, in mission, in affecting lives. Jesus can actually be here by this next year. This thing can happen. This thing can happen. He said, when you see this sign, look up for your redemption. Draw it near. It's time to double our effort in giving. It's time to double our effort in prayer. It's time to double our effort in showing it. It's time to double our effort in labor. He said, you have lost your first love. Repent. And do your first work. You know how crazy you were for the Lord when you first gave your life to Him. This is the time to go full and with nothing left. This last move of God is a missionary movement. But it's going to carry signs and wonders. It's going to be backed by every resource of heaven. There is nothing God will hold back. Just because of the salvation of nations. Open our eyes, oh God. Circumcise our hearts. Do a deep work in our hearts. Take these truths and register them in our hearts. Take these truths and register them in our hearts. Make us that pure bride. Those wise virgins. Those wise virgins. Waiting for their master's return. That even if you tarry further than we expect. Then our lamps be filled with oil and our lights burning. And we are busy doing what you commissioned us to do. Being faithful to you that called us. Walking in holiness and in righteousness. Living a life that is worthy of you unto all calling. Give us fresh oil in our lamps. Give us fresh, pour fresh fire on our soul. Fire, passion for you, love for you, crazy love for you. Pour a fresh fire for souls in our hearts. Remove every distraction before us. The distraction in these last days are so much. Keep our eyes focused on what matters. Distractions from the family. Distractions from the jobs. Distractions from career. Distractions of, of the things we need to make ends in life. Let all those shadows go before us as the light of your glory shine.
something is going to happen next year. We're entering a new season. We're entering a new season in God. We're entering a new season. We're entering a new spiritual season on the planet Earth. We're entering a new spiritual season on planet Earth. We're entering a new spiritual season on planet Earth. It's time of the latter rain. It's time of the latter rain. It's the time for the latter rain. It's the time for the latter rain. It's going to be a new outpouring of the Spirit upon the earth. Upon the ready bride of Christ. It's not then. It's now that you need to declare seasons of prayer. And start seeking God's face. There is going to be an awakening, even in this country. They as if this missionary thing, the missionaries, people like our brother just died this year. Can you imagine? Bio. Cap Pro has been here for years. He just died a couple of weeks ago. Cap Pro has been here for years. And the church still seen. Look at bishops with big millions of money, millions in bank accounts. Nobody is caring about mission. This Lagos alone can fund African mission. This church, of course, 10% of the churches in Lagos can fund the whole mission in Africa. How many countries do we have? 56. But that veil is going to open, lift. The veil is going to lift from the church. But it's not everybody. There's still people like Esau who will be walking like nothing is happening. It's a new awakening that is going to come. And God was talking to me. He said, it's going to fall on the campuses. There's something that is going to, a change that will occur again on the campuses. God is going to send some of you to campuses, to secondary school, to go and ignite revival among our young people. Our young people are going to be the key to this thing. But this end time move, we grab the rich, the poor, the market women, all types of people will be in it. Something is going to happen. Something is on the horizon. And it's not going to be in Rehabonke Crusade or David Obwele Crusade. It's going to start in prayer meetings. In small places where people are crying out to God. Repenting of their sins. Humbling themselves before God. And then that fire will be carried into every aspect of Christianity. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Pour a fresh fire upon my soul. Pour a fresh fire upon my life.
In Jesus' name. Pastor Nob, we have to start planning now. The whole series is going with me on pilgrimage next year. Just be watching the kind of planning. If the one walk by Nigeria works, we can charter our own flight and go. Next year. If you can go this year, go. And most of the seasons are now. And the sea pilgrimage will continue till December because it starts with the, this season and continue. Don't wait till when the rest of the world are now going. After the rapture, that's when you are going to know where your Messiah was born. Lift up your hands. Father, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For granting us the mercy, the favor, the privilege to know these things. You said the children of Issachar have understanding of the times. And they know what Israel ought to do. The next thing now is what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? Having understood the times, what are we supposed to do? And I know there is one big thing in your mind. It's the harvest of the nations. Show every one of us our place in your end time plan for the nations of the world. Show every one of us. Some of us were created, put in our mother's womb to be Apostle Paul that will reach many nations. Don't let us die limited by church walls. Some of us have things you've given us that will affect the whole globe. If you have made us a shark, don't let us die in Tilapia. Help everyone of us to see our place. To see our role. There are those that are to use technology. There are those that are to use publications. There are those that are to go after the children. There are those that are to go after the youths. There are those that are to go after the campuses. There are those that are to go after the government. There are those that are to go after ministers. Help all of us to know our place.
and then to commit our life to doing our part in your great global plan. I give you praise. I give you thanks. In Jesus' name. Have you been impacted by this message? Please share your experience with Pastor David Ogweli. Email address Dominion Image Media at yahoo.com or call 0803-435-7959. 0803-590-9900.